Today, let us look at the book of Matthew, chapter 22. Matthew, chapter 22, verse 34. Matthew chapter 22, verse 34 to 40. It says, But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend, depend all the law and all the prophets. Yes, amen. So, as uh, we were meditating last Sunday, I was remembering uh, this verse. Is, you know, so, this is talking about um, the most important thing in our lives, in our life of faith. So, when the Pharisees asked Jesus, what is the most greatest commandment uh, in the law? There are so many laws uh, which God gave uh, through Moses, with uh, over 600 laws. But what is the most important thing? It is uh, when Jesus answered that um, to love God. Uh, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. This is the great and first commandment. Not only with the heart, but also your soul and your mind. So everything, everything in you, maybe all your strength of your power, your body, and your intelligence, your everything. It should be toward God. It should be love God. Everything what you have. Not only some time, maybe when you come to church and give service, but then your life itself, you should love God with all of you. So, that is the great and first commandment. And then, what is the next? It is to love your neighbor as yourself. So, uh, we can see that there is also the order. First thing is to love God. And this, this should be the first. Uh, if we love one another first, then what will happen? We are not perfect in the love. So our love can be collapsing. So the wisdom and then also the, uh, the great commandment from God is love your God first. Firstly, you need to love your God. Then if we love God, what is happening? Actually, we are not first to love God. I think God loves us first. Right? So when we love God, then there was there is God's love first. Amazing love. So we can see, we can find this great love from John chapter 15. We could also read. But then let us look at it first. John chapter 15. Verse 12. Yeah. It says that 
This is my commandment that you love one another as, as I have loved you. Greater love is no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friend. So Jesus said that you love each other as I have loved you. So before we love each other, what we need to know is what we received. What already we received from our Lord this uh, the greatest love we received. So greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Yeah, so remember this one. You are receiving love first. You received already this love. Then with this love, as I have loved you, you need to know it. And then with that, then you love one another. You can be able to love. You are able to love each other because you have received. So, to uh, what what is the first thing which we should do is we need to know the love of God. We need to receive the love of God, and then we need to love God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our um, strength. So Jesus said that. Uh, you need to love me. <laughs> you need to not love me. Uh, you need to believe in me. Why Jesus could say? Uh, sometimes he say that. Yeah. So how he could say like that is Jesus was not living for himself. Yeah. He, he presented God in this world yeah, to us. Yeah. And then he presented the love of God to us as he died on the cross. He really showed the love of God. He became the one with God. That's how he could say that you love me. You believe in me. You believe in God. And then he showed that how God loves us. God loves us with all of him. He gave even his life. He could give all to us. That's how also we should love God that way. So, but then the Jewish people did not really have this love. Right? So that's why he, they couldn't really realize, recognize Jesus as the Messiah, as the Son of God. They couldn't understand the will of God. So John chapter 5, verse 41. John chapter 5, verse 41. They said, I do not receive glory from people, but I know that you do not have the love of God within you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If anyone comes in his own name, you will receive him. How you can, can you believe when you receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the one, uh, from the only God? Yeah, so how the Pharisees, the, uh, the Jewish people, uh, they were seeking the glory from each other. They were seeking uh, the love from each other. They were not really seeking the glory of God. They, they didn't really believe in God, absolutely. They did not have that absolute faith. They did not have absolute love. So the first commandment was to love God with absolutely. You need to love God, you need to believe in God and seek God's glory. That is the first and great commandment. But then the Jewish people, they did not really seek God's glory first. And then in the history, they really had a lot of idols. And then yeah, they were mixed with the world. So, 
also, you know, if we say that I love God, but then if we are seeking the glory from ourselves, if we are doing something to show to others, or, um, yeah, if we are not really believing in God absolutely, then uh, we will miss the will of God. And we, we can do great mistake, right? And then, so in this, the great commandment, then there is the way uh, we need to follow. With all our heart, with all our strength, with all our soul, we need to love God. Not, from, not loving other things first, but then we need to give all our life to God first. Then there is no like confusion. Why we are confused? Confused. Why we are hating each other? Why we are changing? It is yeah, maybe it is because we are not focusing this love of God, and we don't also love God with all our things, right? Okay. So we need to uh, be trained. We need to do training in the church. We need to love God as our center. In the church, we need to train. Not seeking ourselves, not seeking some other things in this world, then we need to train to love God first with all our things. So let us read the Revelation chapter 4. Verse 6. Let us read uh, from verse 2 to 6. Uh, at once I was in spirit and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and uh, Canelia. And around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. From the throne came flash of lightning and uh, rumblings and curls of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was, uh, there was as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne uh, are four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, a second living creature like an ox, and third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in his flight. And the four living creatures, each of them, with the six wings are fully of eyes all around and within. And day and night, they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And um, then, yes. So, here then, uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, Apostle John, he saw the great vision, uh, which is in heaven. Yeah, it, there is a throne of God. And how was it? Yeah. There were 24 elders and 24 crowns. Uh, and then there was the uh, river of crystal, the sea of crystal. So, this is... Uh, this is the sea. This is talking about 
that happened after this sea, the sea of crystal, there is heaven. Very clear, very clean, and very beautiful, right? So then there is also there are uh, living creatures. All types of living creatures are coming up. So what is this symbolizing? Yeah. This is really have the great symbol. Um, yeah. These creatures, they had uh, six wings. Yeah. Not only two, you know, birds, they have two wings. And then they are flying. Then these creatures, they have six wings. And then they are flying. They can fly. So in heaven, so this is talking about there is this freedom. Yeah. We can move anywhere. We have the perfect freedom. And then these creatures, they have full of eyes in front and behind. Can you imagine? The creature, not other maybe things, but then full of eyes in front. If we have three eyes, and it's very strange, right? But then maybe in the face and the, all the body has the eyes. And then even backward, backside, there is eyes. So they are flying and then they are full of eyes. And then with that eye, those eyes, what are they doing? They are looking at God. And then these four creatures looks, looks like uh, four living things in this world. The first one was like lion. Lion is like the king of the jungle, right? It is the representative of the wild animals. And then another one was ox. Ox is the maybe representative of the domestic animals. And then man, you know, we are men. And then another one was birds, like bird, yeah. eagle. Yeah. It is the maybe the representative of the flying things. So this is talking about all the living creature, they are they are looking at us with the full of eyes in their body. So what is it? They have the sense to always continually sensing God and then looking, adoring Him, and then they are focusing on God. They they are not looking at other things, but then with all of their body, all of their their things. They are looking at God. And then continually they are praising God. What did they say? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Yeah. Yeah. And whenever the living creature give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who, who lives forever and ever. Yeah. So um, this is how heaven is like. So all the creatures, they are ever praising God, ever giving thanks to God. Why? Because God is a creator. And then God loves them. God loves us. Then they are full of praise and thanksgiving. How, he, how God created us and how God loves us. So, uh, as, uh, as they realize, as they know this love of God, then they don't cease to praise God. So, uh, maybe that's how yeah, we should live. God gave us this commandment yeah, to love God with all of you, with all of your heart and your uh, soul and your strength because God love you that much. Then because of that love, God wants you to also love God with all of your your life. Yeah. So I have, uh, if we lose this love of God, if we don't really love this way, then our life can be uh, somehow chaos. We don't we will not have that peace in our heart. We can change every time. We can be swayed away. 
from this world. Also, situations, circumstances, then if we know the love of God and if we can also love God with all, absolutely, then uh, there will be a peace and joy in our life. Yeah. Then yeah, we can also uh, fulfill the will of God and purpose of our life, bearing the beautiful fruit in our lives. So I hope yeah, we can meditate this. Uh, then we can always uh, love God first. Yeah. Then we can do His uh, will in our lives. So let us pray together. Father God, we thank you for this time. Thank you for teaching us your will for our lives. Father, as you loved us, we also want to love you. As Jesus showed us your great love, we want to learn, we want to also receive this love always. And then we don't want to be shaken in this faith and love. Father, so please uh, help us to believe in you first and to love you first. And then our life can go uh, the right way and we can fulfill your will. Uh, we thank you for this time. Please be with us and guide us. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>